Good morning and a warm welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia on a sunny summer Sunday morning to those who are here in person and those who will join us online. Sunday services continue in July and August at 10 o'clock in the morning and these services are available online on Sundays from approximately 11.30. Morning prayers available online daily from 6.30. Weekday services are Wednesdays at 7.30, and that's from the Book of Alternative Services, and Friday at noon from the Book of Common Prayer. Starting in September, we are planning to have two Sunday morning services, and just giving you a heads up on that, and details will be announced closer to September. Weekly meetings and meditation sessions are on hold during the summer months, and will resu <coughs> we'll resume in September. The, <clears throat> the lunchtime organ recitals in August will be on Wednesdays from 12.15 to 1 and are August the 10th with Paul Halley, Director of Music here at the Cathedral Church of All Saints. On August the 17th, Sean Sneddon, one of Paul's students. And August the 24th, Nicholas Halley, Assistant Music Director here at the Cathedral Church of All Saints. Now you may have noticed a change in the large notice board outside and I believe it's ready to show information electronically in bright lights. Today at four o'clock we have a service celebrating Pride Month. Bishop Sandra will be our celebrant and Reverend Ann Turner will preach. This will be an outdoor service on the steps of the cathedral and has been planned by the Worship with Pride team and I hope you will all come to this special service. The order of service for this morning is provided in the bulletin. And let us begin our service with the territorial acknowledgement. And I ask you to join me in this. As we gather in person and in virtual space, we wish to acknowledge with gratitude that we do so on the traditional and unceded land of the Mi'kmaq people. We give thanks for this land and all those who have stewarded it for their stories and for their lives past, present, and future, we commit ourselves to prayerfully seek reconciliation, justice, and healing, that we might listen and learn to be faithful stewards of this good land and live in right relationship. And our opening hymn is Judge Eternal, Throned in Splendor. And if you want music, you'll find it in the blue hymn books at 594. Thank you. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated as we listen to Holy Scripture. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden through the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Psalm 15 is found on page six of your bulletin. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed her him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Although you will hear my voice, I pray that you will hear God's word, for I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No fair. Do you ever hear that at home or in the playgrounds? Is it just Manitoba saying or do children use it here in Nova Scotia? When my children shouted, no fair, I was torn between finding out what was bothering them and correcting their English to, that's not fair. But this is what I heard when I read today's gospel. I could hear Martha complaining, no fair, and Jesus looking at her and gently saying, Martha, Martha. Now I have often struggled, still struggle with this reading to really understand the tension between Martha and Mary. I don't know, do any of you find it difficult? Only Luke records this domestic story. And it's so well known that we are prone to call a very busy person a Martha. It's easy to guess that Martha was the older sister, and I would guess that Lazarus, who isn't mentioned in this story, but in others with his sisters, Martha and Mary, must have been the kid brother. Luke tells us that Jesus and his companions went to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Isn't it strange that Mary, a woman and a younger sister, sat down at Jesus' feet like a student would, listening to him talking, and Martha, trying to be a good hostess, was probably preparing a meal. Does this not sound okay? Wouldn't we expect the guests to be offered food and drink? And wouldn't it be reasonable to expect Mary to help her older sister? However, we are told that Mary sits and listens to Jesus and Martha is distracted by her many tasks. Now keep note of that word, distracted. And then she complains to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. I find it interesting that Martha doesn't quietly ask Mary to help, but do you remember the key word? She was distracted. Jesus doesn't suggest to Mary that she should help Martha. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. Well, I wonder how Martha felt after that put down. The story ends and we are left to imagine how the conversation between Jesus, Martha and Mary continued, and maybe Lazarus. So what do you think is going on here? Luke places this story right after the parable of the Good Samaritan. So does this indicate anything? Was he pointing out that Jesus didn't just teach about actions, such as that of the Good Samaritan, but wanted his disciples to take time to listen and talk about his mission? After all, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and Bethany is an easy walk 
from Jerusalem. I feel that if Martha had just provided Jesus and his companions with some cool water and had sat down with him for a while, things would have been better for everyone. <coughs> Pardon me. Have you ever been invited to a friend's house for a meal, shown into the living room, perhaps given a drink, and then left with the husband or wife while the other person disappeared into the kitchen and didn't reappear until the meal was served? At the table, one of the partners remains while the other is hopping up and down, in and out of the kitchen, and then starts to clean up, and you never get a chance for a chat. That, when that happens to me, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Perhaps I am causing too much trouble, and this story about Martha and Mary reminds me of that sort of experience. Was Martha doing anything wrong? She was trying to be an excellent hostess, but she was distracted. That is the key word. She was more concerned about how well the table was being prepared, how well the food was being served, did she have enough matching dishes, and she was ignoring her guests. She was fussing about things that didn't really matter to her guests, and her principal guest was Jesus. Jesus said to her, there is need of only one thing. Now some commentators suggest this meant only one dish, and others think it refers to paying attention to Jesus' words rather than fussing over a meal. I think that's what it refers to. Either way, Martha had lost perspective. We could see that she had lost the point of her work. She was focused on the work of preparing a meal rather than the person for whom the meal was being prepared. And because she had lost the reason for her work, it had become a burden. And perhaps that's why she complained about Mary not helping her. The important thing is the word of the Lord. It's listening to Jesus. So often we busy ourselves, we fill our lives with busyness. And that's where the word business comes from. But we fill all the gaps with tasks because we don't realize that what we really need is to have God in our lives. We try to make a success of life by filling it with work leisure activities and novelties, while all the while becoming anxious, frustrated, and distracted. The things that we're doing are not wrong in themselves, but we are, <clears throat> we are substituting them for God's word. We're not listening. St. Augustine hit the nail on the head when he said, our hearts are restless till we find our rest in thee. And that was the better part that Mary chose. I suppose Jesus could have said to Martha, thanks Martha, but man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We know that we cannot live without bread, and we use bread to represent all food. But what is life with lots of bread if there's no meaning to it? I have always felt sorry for Martha, and perhaps it's because at times I have been fussing over tasks that had no real significance. I'm sure we have all experienced times when, when we could have been talking to friends or even strangers, and instead we went off to do something that was less important than giving attention to another human being. I'm sure there were times when I could have spent more time with my children instead of doing some chores. We do need to find a balance between being a Martha and a Mary. Families and friends do need supper as well as conversation but we must get our priorities right. We must decide on what values we will hold. We must hear God's word, otherwise we won't know what tasks we should undertake. I think we have all chosen the better part this morning. In the peace of a sunny Sunday morning, we have come here together to hear God's word and to worship him. I trust that this will help us through our tasks during the week and I hope we all take the time to read God's word at home so that we keep ourselves tuned into what God really wants us to do. One of our other lessons this morning, or all of our other lessons, have the same message. Now, we have not been reading the Old Testament lessons recently because actually Dr. Strang asked us to cut down on the amount of talking we did in church. So that we're, and we're all wearing masks. You're all wearing masks 
so we don't always read the Old Testament lesson. But if we had read that, we would have heard the prophet Amos warning the people of Israel that their priorities are leading them into trouble. They are obsessed with money, and they're using false wits to cheat the poor who are trying to buy grain. Eventually, Amos says, they shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, and they shall not find it. They'll be too distracted. There's that word distracted again. Paul writes to the Colossians because he has heard that they are not putting Jesus first. There were all sorts of religions, religious concepts in Colossae, a strange mixture of mystical Jewish thoughts, Greek ideas, and Persian concepts. Some of these included a hierarchy of spiritual beings, referred to as thrones, dominions, rulers, and powers. The Colossians were trying to fit Jesus into this mosaic, so Paul writes to them to explain that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is first, and all things were made by him. He is the head of the body, which is the church. He is our first priority. Don't be distracted. Perhaps when we are really busy in getting our priorities mixed up, we'll hear a gentle voice saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing, and Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. But instead of Martha, Martha, we will each hear our own name. If we stop and listen and reassess, it will bring down our blood pressure, so it will be good for us physically as well as spiritually. So use your own name and then say, you are worried and distracted by many things. I suggest you try that during the week. Just say your own name and then, you are worried and distracted by many things. For an abundant life, we must not become distracted by many things. We must get our priorities right and sit at the feet of Jesus, or better still, kneel at the foot of the cross, for there we will see sacrificed for us in love the word of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you as you're able to stand and confess the faith of our baptism with me as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers of the people, you may remain standing or you may sit or kneel, whatever is your usual custom for prayer. In the world, we pray today for all people living in areas of strife and conflict, especially remembering the people of Ukraine and the people of Yemen. We pray for those living in areas of heat waves, famine, and natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Linda, our primate, David, our metropolitan, Sandra, our bishop, Paul, our dean and rector, Helen, our associate priest, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, our deacons, 
Jillian, our engagement leader, Russ, Nicholas, and Paul, our music leaders, our associated parish of Falcon St. James, and all who serve here according to their various callings. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who travel that they may return safely, rested and restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are ill or in any special need, remembering at this time, Cheryl and Barry, Sharon, David, Jan, Laura, Ken and his family, Douglas, Ian, William, Bob, Mia, Danny, Sarah and Ulrich, Dan, Andrew, Ed and Patricia. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died, remembering at this time, Harry and Shirley. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this community and all who live here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We particularly pray for those who lack food, clothing, and shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that we will be moved to provide practical assistance to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Our hymn is in the bulletin, or you may use the hymn book, it's number 439.
has been prepared, the bread and wine gifts from God's creation. Let us pray. O God, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Help us in all we do to offer ourselves as a true and living sacrifice through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. In wonderful diversity, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of love and light, heaven and earth are full of your light. Glory to you, our God. Blessed is he, blessed are we, blessed are all who come to your light. Glory to you, our God. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We in are one body, for we all share in one bread. 
These are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Susan, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Maureen, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Paul, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Amen. Susan, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Maureen, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cup of salvation. Ray, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Paul, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen.
Oh God, as we are strengthened in these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinite more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love, today and always. Amen. And our closing hymn is printed in the bulletin or in at number 81 in your hymn book. Go in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.